there is a lot of great free resources for astrophotography out there. And today I'll be counting down my top 10 list of the best free astrophotography tools. And we're starting this list off at number 10 with the ISS Transit Finder. This is a very neat homepage. And all you really do is you go and select where you are. And in my case, I just selected like a random spot here in the middle of Copenhagen. Select a, a date range. You select how far you're willing to drive from the set location. Then you click Calculate. And what it will now do is it will show what kind of transitions you will have with ISS being close to the moon. And we can see we have a transit here if you want to see it you can go show on the map and then you can see from the location i'm at here well it's not ideal but if i was willing to drive let's say out here i would probably the, what it suggests to be one of the best well that's in the lake so it's probably gonna be difficult but there we can see what it will look like we can even move around and we can see how it will intersect the moon what's the face what will the transit time be all those kind of things it's at number 10 because it's a very like specific thing but if you're really looking <clears throat> for specifically iss transit this is probably one of the best tools that you could find out there we're gonna jump over to our phone and here there's an app called my aurora forecast and alert this is a aurora forecast app it's pretty good as you can see you have a you have a map and you can see where there are chances of aurora right now tonight it is very very poor so it's probably a bad choice of a day to <laughs> record this but normally you can see this gray shaded area that would normally be the first green yellow and then finally like a deep red depending on the chances to see aurora it also show you um show you short-term predictions of what it's going to be like for like the next 30 minutes if we go in here zero percent it's not really giving me good chances tonight, so probably not tonight. I'm not going to be counting on seeing any Aurora, but, but the reason why I really like this app is because it's kind of a set it and forget it thing. I have it on my phone, and if there's a chance to see Aurora that night, notification will pop up, and then I can go in and I can check the stats and see how likely is it and, and how powerful will it be and that kind of thing. So I really like it so that you don't miss upcoming Auroras. At number eight, we have PHD Open Guiding Software. This is a um, guiding software for your telescope. So if you're looking for a piece of software that you can use with your guide scope to make your telescope just automatically track the stars across the night sky, this is the tool to get. It is really, really good. And you can see they have a very nice explanation here where the guide scope goes to PHD2, goes to your mount, and then it does all the little find the star and it tracks them across the night sky. It's a very nice tool. And if you jump over to the download page, you also see here that it comes both for, for Windows and for Mac. So regardless of what operating system you're on, it's not for Linux though. So maybe you can run it in like a container, like Wine or something like that over on, on Linux. I don't know. Um, but at the very least, it's there. If you want to have your telescope track the stars with a guide scope, you should go and get PHD2 right now. A lot of you guys will be familiar with Stellarian. In my mind, if you need an interactive star chart, this is the tool to get. Move forward and backward through time as uh, as you would expect. And then we have M81. If I wanted to know what it would look like if I took a picture of this, I can just go up here to my view and I can say, hey, I want to take it with my, let's say I want to use my uh, Canon RA camera. Maybe I want to use my uh, LXD50 telescope, maybe I want to use, uh, oh, for this one, I might actually want to put a 2x Barlow on it. And I can see what that is going to look like um, framed up with the with the specific gear. It's super cool. And of course, this also comes um, as, a, as a desktop variant, as I have it here, both for Windows, Mac, and, and Linux. It also comes as a, um, as a web app, so you can just run it straight in a browser if you want to do that. And it also comes as an app. Um, and there's a lot of cool functionality in here. You can even do like telescope control. Like uh, you can hook your telescope up and the, the software can communicate with your telescope. And then you can have your telescope just by saying, hey, I want to look at that object and then it will stew your telescope to it. We're almost at the halfway point. We're getting to number six and we're going to be looking at nighttime as imaging and astronomy or just NINA for short. This is like a central like controller software if you're running large complex 
um, astrophotography setups where you can integrate with cameras, telescope, filter wheels, focuses, camera rotators, various switches, guide scopes, weather observation devices, domes, all that kind of thing can be controlled from within one software. That means if you have a, like say, let's say you have a dome somewhere and you have a, a weather device under that, that checks for maybe rain so that it can say, hey, now it's raining, let's go close the dome up because there's probably no point in keeping the dome open or maybe stuff like a uh, power outage, close the dome, those kind of things. But it can do, as, as I said, camera control, you can control your sequences, you can of course do telescope control, all those kind of things can be adjusted from within this software. So if you really want to just go nuts with gadgets that all needs to be adjusted instead of having a gazillion different apps, you can have a lot of it controlled from within just one piece of software. In number five, we have Auto Stack It. If you don't know this tool, this is a stacking tool that allows you to take multiple, and we're talking a lot of frames here, and you can stack those into a, a single image, um, basically making them as one long exposure. Where Auto Stack It really shines is as also to say here that it is focusing on lucky imaging. Lucky imaging is really strong when it comes to um, planetary photography, where we're dealing with really, really small objects. So that also means that we are very susceptible to atmospheric disturbances. And when it comes to the download of it, um, it is available natively um, on Windows, to say here. Um, and I also say, however, it does run fine using Wine in uh, on Linux and Mac OS. So they say that you can use it. It's only, again, officially supported on Windows, but you can run it in a Wine box or something like that over on, uh, on Linux and Mac OS. Okay, number four, and of course, we have to include more stacking software in this type. It is Deep Sky Stacker. And Auto Stack, it was like the tool to get for planets and moons. If you're doing deep sky stuff, Deep Sky Stacker, really, really good tool. Um, and the one that I've been been using for, for quite a while that I'm familiar with. Uh, it's the same kind of deal. You have your SOPs, you have your darks, bias, and flats, put it into the software and it will do all the calculations for you and do all the noise reduction that you need so you can move after that, move into, uh, into post-processing. Once again, when we move to the download page, we can see that it is a Windows only software again. Now, before we move into top three, I just have an honorable mention, and that is Cyril. Now, this tool does a lot of the same things that Auto Stack It and Deep Sky Stacker does, um, as it is an astronomical imaging processing tool. It can also do a lot of the post-processing, like after the stack has been completed. We can see here that it is a Linux, Windows, and Mac OS um, uh, compatible software. The reason why I haven't included in the list is simply because that I haven't had enough time to play with it. I was, for some reason, this went under my radar. Um, I've always just been using like Deep Sky Stacker and Auto Stacker. It looks really awesome for the things that I've seen other people use it for. It's immensely complicated, at least at, at first glance, but it's definitely a tool I'll be keeping an eye on. And I think it could potentially go in and be my new favorite um, post-processing tool. Okay, we're in top three, and we're starting with Telescopius. This is a web page, and it is amazing. After I discovered it, it very quickly became my favorite site for just figuring out what targets are available. While it's easy to use something like Stellarium to look around and see what's up and stuff like that, this just takes it to the next level. Look at this. If I say, hey, I would really like to look at some deep sky objects. I'm going to go here, deep sky objects. And um, then let's go and uh, let's play around with the filters. Let's say, okay... I want to check from civil sunset until civil sunrise. That's fine. And let's say I want it above, oh, let's go down to 20 degrees for at least an hour. And I would really like to look at some uh, some galaxies. I've clearly been, <laughs> been putting in these settings here before. So let's just say I want to look at galaxies from my location. And we can begin to narrow it down. We can see magnitude and maybe I want to say, oh, I want it to be at least one, uh, I don't know. Oh, that's probably a little bit too much. Like one arc minute, right? No more tiny, tiny galaxies. Just filter those away. And it just shows that how many galaxies do we see that is above 20 degrees for at least one hour from my location in this window, time window that fits my 
my magnitude, my, my angular size parameters, all that good stuff. And if you then want to go you dive even further and say, oh, hmm, okay, maybe I want to look at M81. When we were also looking at before, we click in on M81, we can get some more details. And more specifically down here, we can do a telescope simulator. Kind of the same thing as we did with uh, with Stellarium, where I have my um, I have my, my Newtonian here. I say I want to take with my Canon RA, stuff like that. And then I can see how this is framed up. I can't remember, did I put up? I have a 2x Barlow here, let's remove that. Go check it out, Telescope Plus, of course, all links are in the description. Now, as a guy that lives in a very light pollution city, one of my absolute favorite tools in terms of hours used is probably the light pollution map, simply just because that when you like me live in a, in a such light polluted area, we have to move out. It's so nice being able to say, okay, I want to watch something towards the south. I should probably not go up to like this, this area up here, but maybe there's a little spot down here that could be good. That's kind of thing. If you, you just have a look at where they, there are dark sky areas in, in around you, depending on what direction you're looking. So if you're looking north, then maybe I should drive over here or something like that. Drive along the coast, you have to find a good spot. Stuff like that. I think it's awesome and I really, really like it. It's so nice to be able to just see where you have dark skies objects around you, especially dark sky sites around you. If you, like me, have to bring all your equipment with you and, uh, and move out of the city in order to be able to take some pictures. Now, when it comes to the tool that I personally use the most, it's probably clear outside. I check this every single day. I have it bookmarked on every device that I have because I check this so often. It's just based just a weather app or weather home site, homepage, I should say, where you go in like, where are you approximately? And then it will give you weather forecast for that area. But it's very astro focused forecast. It's not just any weather forecast. First of all, you can see here, right now tonight, we have a full moon on Wednesday the 22nd. We can see the first line down here shows our different levels of darkness. We have of course, when the sun is up right now, and then we have the sunset that comes into to civil, nocturnal, um, and astral darkness. There's no night here at the moment, and soon we are going to run out of astral darkness too. And then you have below that, you have another line that shows you the moon. So you can see that now the moon is down, and right around now, actually, is when we have the moon rise, and then the moon will be up, and it will go down again just past 3 o'clock tonight. And I can see all these things, and if I want to see even more, I just click here, and I get a complete breakdown of cloud coverage, visibility scores, wind predictions. It's going to be windy tonight. Um, all those things are just in here. And it just means that when it comes to like, getting your astro weather information, this is just one of the best tools. Do you agree with my list? Would you have changed the order or there are some other tools that you would have put on it? I'd love to hear it from you in the comment section below. You often see it that it either has fully manual, push to or go to. Now, this refers to how automated the construction for the Russian Buran space shuttle started in 1980, where they built no less than eight test models. 